I've gone with Murak. Definitely a winery. Uh, fantastic winemaker. Yeah. One, mm -hmm. of, one, of, one of the best up and comers in, in the country. Do you guys get the hint from yes. Lockie? Yeah, it can't be Murak. Well, I, well, I don't know when. I don't know if Murak exists, so don't <laughs> try and be like, well, actually, me on where Murak is. He's down the road, bro. Oh, shit, that makes sense. <laughs>back to another episode of wine for the people Lockie's being very mysterious at the moment uh as you know this is where we blind taste wines and we basically have to try and figure out the little guessing game the bracket that different droppers sorted out for us this week it's from one producer one specific producer i have to taste some grape juice in a glass and tell you who made it I'm confident. Big thank you to Different Drop for sorting us out with these ones. If you want to drink any of these wines, you get a nice little discount uh, if you head to the Different Drop website. They've got a specific landing page for the Wine for the People wines that we drink on the show. And the other cool thing about that is if you do buy any wines through that page, you will be supporting the channel. We get a little bit of a kickback from them. It's nothing uh, huge, but I don't make very much money, so anything is nice. Uh, the other thing to mention is, I'd really like you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you haven't already, it's a lot of fun. Um, I, the thumbnails are good. Wine's nice. I don't know what else to tell you about it. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're watching these videos consistently, it's one click. Anyway, we'll leave that for now. Let's get into these wines. I'm gonna tell you exactly where they came from and what the winemaker's mother's maiden name is. Get ready for this. Strap in, it's gonna be a big one. Let's get into wine number one. There's very few producers out there that have a particular style that you can identify really quickly or particular wines that are that well put together that are just like unrecognizably anything else. So I think, yeah, this, this is definitely gonna be a real challenge, but, but regardless, let's taste the wines and see if they're any good. White wine, lean, fresh, bright, different smell. All together, not expecting that. Oh, that's off dry. Oh, that is off dry to hell. It's like off dry sherbet. That's really cool. And I think Brendan and Nora will hate it. Off dry Moscato is my guess on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got some sweetness there too. Definitely cool little off dry little wine. Pretty, it's peachy. Yeah, this is, this is interesting. It smells amazing, it smells weird. It's also sweet as fuck, like real sweet. I wasn't expecting that either. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's just so sweet. It's got this nice little sherbet finish to it, which is a little bit spritzy, but at the same time, the majority of this is just, hey kid, do you like wine? Drink this, like that sort of thing. Not like, hey grown-ups, would you like to have a glass of wine with me and discuss like the geopolitics going on in but I mean, the wine itself is really cool. Um, it's got a good balance of like acidity and sweetness, but it's got some floral tones as well, but I quite like it. I'm not gonna go variety, but it's definitely off dry. Uh, I'll, I'll grab three bottles of this, I think it's pretty fun. And then I'm gonna go $37. I want a dozen, but I'd be embarrassed to have a dozen of these wines in my house because it's so yummy. Nah, fuck it, dozen. 12 and I'll pay $32 for it. $32, thank you. Uh, wine number two. We have a really awesome looking uh, uh, medium to light uh, coloured red wine, garnet hued and um, faded rim too. Nice violet, violets aren't red. Nice rose red colour to it. I reckon that's a Pinot. And it's a very, very good Pinot. That's an excellent, excellent Pinot. Wow, that perfume is so amazing. That's really good. Mate, cracking Pinot, cracking. 100% whole bunch, youthful, freshly released Pinot Noir. Blows my mind. I will happily drop uh, $45 a bottle of that and grab 12 bottles. What diametrically opposed wines? Wine number one and wine number two. I think it's a Pinot. Um, it's got that sort of like sour raspberry thing that I have identified as being one of the characteristics in one Pinot Noir that I tried one time. So now every wine that has that must be a Pinot. And this is really representative of this producer's style of Pinot Noir as well. Like all of the Pinots I've ever had from these guys out it have always been fantastic. Uh, 12, 50, awesome. Uh, yes, yes please. Yes, yes, yes please. <laughs> Last wine from this producer, wine number three. I think that this is gonna be the big red of the group. It makes sense given the other things that we've tried. Looks young, doesn't look like it's spent any time sitting in the bottle. These feel really Australian, but they're also so distinct. Like there's very few people that would make all three of these wines, an off dry style wine, a whole bunchy perfumed Pinot, and then like this kind of classic Cabernet, like really classic Cabernet. 
pretty impressive, pretty impressive. I would probably find the uh, where the Britannomyces is in this wine a little bit distracting, and that's just a personal thing. I would happily part with around about 40 bucks a bottle, and I'd probably buy three bottles. I actually would, would I think on the palate, weight, shape, structure, tannin, drive. Yeah, 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 that carries through. That's that's a really cool wine. Um, it's a food wine for me. Like, it's very specific. I make this pasta, which is like olives, garlic, onions, a whole jar of anchovies, pancetta, basil, and like plenty of oil and stuff like that. And this is a wine that would go really beautifully with that because you've got that sort of like olive tapenade thing going on in here. That's going on in the pasta dish as well. There's enough body to the wine that it's not going to get lost in the sauce. The acidity on that is really, like, really fresh, really bright. The tannins are really live. When, and we've apparently got some hints as well here, uh, but I, I, I might be able to ask some questions. Or do you want to give, deliver hints or would you like me to ask some questions? Get, can you give me a hint? Mm, they're from Victoria. No, 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 that's all right. That's all right. But they're the hints, basically. It's just the, the, the state and regions. Um, six bottles, and I reckon that's the most expensive. I reckon that's $48 a bottle. But yeah, like them, like them a lot. Cool lineup. Well done, people out at Producer. I'm like, I'm not even gonna take a real guess to produce. I don't know any Victorian wine labels. Is it Murak? Is it Murak? There we go. Put one on the list. I don't even know if that's a winery, but it sounds like a winery's name. Oh man, I'm just gonna have to say ladder. So, off dry, white, whole bunchy perfume Pinot, and like a Bordeaux blend. You said you could give me some hints. Oh yeah, this is Mac Forbes. This is Mac Forbes, 100%. Like this, that's the only guy that makes all three of these wines. Mac Forbes, 100%. It's the Hugh Cabernet thing. That's one of his Pinots. That's his off dry Rieslings from Strathbogey. That's what I'm gonna go from there. Let's see how we go. Sweet. Alrighty guys, three wines, one producer. Mm -hmm. I was fumbling around in the dark with that, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. I've come up with something that I think is a winery, but it might also be just a word that I've made up. I've gone with Murak. Definitely a winery. Uh, fantastic winemaker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one, of, one, of, one of the best up and comers in, in the country. It does um, have width and breadth that could match this, but mm -hmm. I, did you guys get the hint from yes. Lockie? It was yes. Victorian. Yeah, it can't be Murak. Well, I don't know when. I don't know if Murak exists, so don't <laughs> try and be like, "Well, actually, me on when Murak is." He's down yeah. the road, bro. Oh shit, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm annoyed that I didn't call it out while I was tasting it because I think no, I've I've visited this producer's cellar door. I'm I'm really confident. <laughs> Go. Oh. Um, but I visited producer cellar door, knowing the hints. Um, and these three styles, like I can't think of another producer that does these three styles at this quality anywhere else in Australia. It has yeah. to be Mac Forbes. It just has to be oh, Mac Forbes. Of course. <laughs> I said ladder. Ladder. Wow. I, I mean, ladder. he could also do this, but it has to be Mac Forbes. Yeah, it's got to be Mac. Right. We'll we'll it's find. Be the Mac Daddy. We'll find out when we talk about wine number one if either of you are right, or if I'm right. Maybe it's Murak. Maybe they've got a Victorian establishment. Um, <laughs> now, this first one here, yummy, yeah. yummy, yummy, yummy. Yeah, I mean, off dry. Yeah, off dry. Got this, got the little sweetness for you. I literally called it Moscato. Like that's how off dry it's, this shit is. It's pretty off dry, but the acid's kept in check. Wasn't my cup of tea. I gave it eighteen dollars and one. Um. <laughs> Yeah, look, I, 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 I've had this style from this producer many times, and I love it. And yeah. but this just isn't at the the standards that he sets for himself. But I went three for thirty-seven because I reckon this would age quite well. Yeah, I went twelve for thirty-two because it's sweet. Yeah, not not biggest fan. What have we got, mate? Well done. You're on fire. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's Good. Doing it. I mean, this, this is a producer. I, I generally, it's 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 a go-to producer for me because you can get. A lot of his wines at about 30 bucks and they're outstanding quality, outstanding but you quality, can spend yeah. 50 to 70 and they're also incredible. Mm. So I drink a lot of this guy's stuff. And you know, probably at my time of like coming up in the industry, he was at like the- How many uh, grams of residual oh, sugar yeah. 50, for uh, 54. 54. It says it on the front in big letters. Right. 54. <laughs> <laughs> Wine number two. <laughs> Wine <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two. All right. I really like this wine. That's amazing wine. Yeah, Stunning. this really, is really favorite, good. Favorite, hands down. Wine on lineup. Yeah, Pino, I'm that. sour it's raspberry. Yeah. Whole, Pino. Whole bunch perfumed Pinot. Pino. Yeah, I had 12 for 44. No notes. No notes. Uh, yeah, 12 yeah. for 45. Uh, I went uh, to, oh, sorry, wrong side. Whoa, uh, 12 for 50. Yeah, so we're all Spain within sweep. $5. We all like the Spain best sweep. wines. There's no chance. And Lockie, how much is it? Oh, mate. What? 
No, this is his village. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. yeah, this is his village. Like, that's for $35. That is just highway robbery. That, that is, is like, uh, the opposite of that, rather. But yeah, we're, we're, we're the beneficiaries of Robin Hood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I would go as far as to say, like, if we were to assemble, like, a top 10 list of wines, like, wines that you absolutely have to have in your cellar from Australia, this is probably going to be one of those and it like not like a if money is no object of like value yeah mm -hmm. if you're actually having to go out and buy them yeah, yeah. for 35 dollars to spend on pain noir in australia it's yeah. it's hard to pay amazing well done mac and finally uh, we had something that i thought was very it, it, it struck me as like oceanic it's like salty and briny mm. and al olivey and all of that sort of stuff yeah 100 it definitely feels like that uh, very bordeauxish like that mm. right bank of bordeaux kind of thing it is classy i really liked what was going on with it i just didn't like it anywhere near as much as the pinot like it, it, in terms mm. of when i would drink it like this is food wine, that's fun. Like, that's just, I'll drink that when food I'm Food wine, age for 15 years if you want to, that kind of wine. It is like a very occasional wine, whereas that is like Friday. Every occasion. Friday, as much as possible. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's just awesome. But yeah, this is, this is, you know, a very classy wine. Perfect, like brilliantly made um, that needs some time and dedication. I uh, had six for 48. I had... Three for 40. Six for 70. So, Lucky, how much was it? Doubt it, yeah. This 70. Is EB? Hugh. Yeah. This is Hugh. I think his name is Dad. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. So you've, called, you've basically called all three of these wines specifically today. Yeah. Yeah. Noah's on it. Yeah. Noah's Jesus on it. <laughs> and what, like, that's always the best way to like, figure out how to taste regions. You go there. Yeah. Um, but that's... And you're going to bloody Bordeaux, you'll come back and be able to pick left bank from right bank without nothing. No, I won't. Price <laughs> <laughs> for Henry and Bordeaux, let him yeah. go. Drink water. Wine line up. Yeah, no, Pinot's the move. But <laughs> quiz for you on this one, what year was that Pinot Noir made? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty guys, uh, we'll be back next week. Get yourself a bottle of this, it is seriously great value. Any Mac Forbes. Any, Any Mac, Mac, Mac Forbes. Forbes. Any Mac. With residual sugar. Alright, we'll talk to you next week guys, see ya. Return to the Mac. What? What? What?